Um, real quickly though, we've had a number of people that just arrived. And if you haven't signed the guest book, please sign the guest book. Uh, this is really important for the family. We want to make sure that everyone who joined us in the celebration of life with Sophia uh, has had an opportunity to sign the guest book. Uh, also, when you do that, uh, on behalf of, again the family and the committee, we'd like to we'd like to provide you a little lunch, and uh, so when you sign in, you'll get a meal ticket. And I've also uh, been given a heads up that the taco truck's not going to be here uh, a long time. So uh, please, uh, if you haven't had a chance to uh, have some lunch, without further ado, I'd like to bring up uh, Sophia's uh, family uh, to give you a welcome. Although I'm her daughter, I didn't inherit that ability. I would like to thank you all for accompanying my family in celebrating, recognizing my mother's life accomplishments. I would also like to thank the awesome organizing committee who put all their efforts and time to make this event happen. I'm anxious to hear all the stories you have to share about my mother. Thank you. everybody for being here. Uh, as Sophie always taught us, it takes a team to make things happen. And I think a lot of you are here because of the path that we crossed with Sophie. And our hope and dream is that we carry on the torch that uh, Sophie lit up the way for us to follow. And so again, just want to thank everybody for being here as part of that team. Thank you. Oh, I know the one Sanchez. Uh, my involvement in the El Excentrico project was my uh, mother was a part of a singing group, Las Hermanas Montoya, that uh, originated from San Jose, California. They originally started as a uh, group of four sisters, um, Mercedes, Ophelia, Esther, and Emilia. My mother was Emilia, um, who later became Emilia Sanchez, my mother. Uh, the group started with the advent of radio, opening local radio stations, playing local nightclubs here in the San Jose area. They were noticed by an executive of uh, the Bacardi Radio Hour in Mexico City, which I tell people that's kind of a jump from going to a uh, country western nightclub to the Grand Ole Opry. It was that big of a uh, jump. You see the Bacardi Radio Hour there. Um, 
the four of them went to Mexico City. They enjoyed some pretty steady work down there. Um, when my Aunt Mercedes married, left the group. And then uh, Press Prado, also known as the Mambo King, discovered them in Mexico City and took them on a world tour. Um, they did a large South American tour with, uh, that's Billy Eckstein in the one picture there. <clears throat> Billy Eckstein, Nat King Cole, Josephine Baker. Uh, they did a uh, large European tour, large Japan tour, released several records, won a gold Chumbucho. record right here. That was a million selling record for them. And anyway, we're real happy to be at this event here. Um, I never knew my mom other than okay. just being a mom. Hi, my name is Monte Carlos, and I'm uh, standing in front of a, uh, <clears throat> not a portrait, but um, it's actually an obituary of my father, Jess Carlos, who died in uh, October 2001. And it just, uh, the obituary uh, obviously talks about his his life, his accomplishments, his family, and it's uh, just something we're proud of that um, we had the opportunity to uh, see all of his work uh, and accomplishments uh, mentioned here, and we're just very proud of the fact that we're now part of this uh, exhibit, photography exhibit, to be able to partake in showing some of the uh, the people and uh, Jess Carlos, um, who was born in 1922 in Jerez, Zacatecas, um, moved to the United States as a baby and uh, grew up and went into the Marine Corps and served in World War II. From there he came out and uh, bought the La Mexicana market in uh, San Jose and then went into uh, radio and became a uh, promoter of music, bringing musicians from Mexico in the 1950s and then became, uh, got into radio and worked at KOFY for um, over 30 years, first as an announcer, then as general manager and finally as co-owner of the radio station and he also for 50 years uh, was owner of International Latin American Enterprises in Oakland where he worked uh, with it, in serving uh, the immigrant community, uh, working on immigration as well as notary public and income taxes and bookkeeping and um, that's all I can uh, say. This is a portrait of my mother, Mercedes Carlos, and uh, this picture was taken in her early 20s. She was um, born in Encarnacion, Jalisco, in 1926, uh, moved to the United States as a young child uh, with her parents. She's the oldest of ten children, and they um, lived uh, throughout, um, lived in Texas and in California, moved to San Jose in the mid-40s, and with her three of her other sisters, formed Las Hermanas Montoya. She left the group in 1950 to marry Jess Carlos and was married to my father until his death in 2000. Antonio Chavez. I'm the current commander of the GI Forum, and in 2009 we celebrated our 50th anniversary here in San Jose. One of the photos uh, that we've had here during the 50 years we've been in San Jose, and we also have one of uh, a book written about Chicanos in Vietnam, and that's Charlie Trujillo who wrote the book. 
and uh, the GI Forum is alive and well. We're going to be having a Veterans Recognition Dinner on November 7th. Is it November 7th is, is our Veterans Recognition Dinner, and uh, we expect to have a real good turnout for that. And we have veterans that are 93 years old, and we have veterans in their 20s, and we're all still uh, part of the Brotherhood, and we're glad we could serve our country, and, and we're still trying to help the younger vets come home and welcome them home. So. Hi, my name is Jose Aguirre. I'm a United States Navy Gulf War veteran, Desert Storm, Desert Shield era. As the resident here, the San Jose, a native, born and bred, actually lived down, grew up two streets uh, down. I'm glad to be part of this organization. It's a great organization that started back with uh, Dr. Garcia, got it started in Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, providing services to the Latino veterans that were not being serviced by the traditional uh, veteran service organizations out there. So when this came about, I mean, it took off like wildfire. And I'm glad that to be part of the new generation that's going to help take it, you know, out into the future. Reaching out to the vets from, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, all the guys that are coming home now, you know, we're here for you guys. We love you guys. Uh, we're, still, we're all brothers. Good afternoon. I'm Bert Garcia. And I want to introduce you to Dr. Torres, who Great. teaches at San Jose State. Gregorio. Amora Torres. Amora Torres is a San Jose professor yeah. of history. Mexican American studies. I see. Yeah. Dr. Jacqueline Bussey. Hi. Daughter in law. <laughs> and I'm Brian. I'm uh, Brian Garcia. Son, I guess. <laughs> He's also a professor at Cabrillo College. Or yeah. Are you teaching at Cabrillo College? I, yeah. I, I taught and, at Cabrillo College for a while, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, one of the questions that I asked uh, Dr. Torres is, what do you teach about history? And and he mentioned a very important thing, that he teaches what is not taught in the textbooks yeah. uh, about the Hispanic culture. Well, one of the things that, that we have been doing for the last 25 years, ever since I came here, is the fact that usually when you teach American history, you, uh, Mexican Americans are not included. You know, a lot of the books may have a paragraph, two paragraphs uh, in, in, in a book. And so right now we represent about you know, 38, 40 percent of the population in California now, and so we need to start revising the history of, of, of California, and including you know, the fact that you know now we make up the majority of the population. Uh, Mexican Americans have been here for a long time, ever since 1777, and we're here now. And we're going to be here in the next for the next 50 years, and so we need to to learn how to teach this class, and we need to teach you know the history of uh, you know the community. Yeah, and that's the essence of our of our display today. We gathered all this uh, magazine photographs that we've had over 33, 32 years with Alexandrico, and our goal is to publicize the fact that we were a significant contribution to the the whole of, of California, San Jose in particular. I mean, at one time we had 40 percent populace, mm -hmm. and so yeah. I think it's an important event, and it's ongoing. Yeah. So and we're I asking think. asking the public to contribute additional photographs because our goal is ultimately to have 400 frames. This is just a start for today. Mm -hmm. and, so. and I think we need to do that because if you can see around, there's a lot of old people <laughs> who go back to the 1950s and 1960s and. I'm impressed that they're here and, and, and they're remembering. I think this is yes. one of the things that we need to do as human beings. We need to remember our past, and, and this and this uh, older people are here to remember those times when they were, you know, prominent members of the community. And Eccentrico, you know, used to play a major role, and I think this is what brought him in. You know, this magazine that you know seems to have that, that's the one experience that they all have in common. I'm so impressed. We we have semi-monthly meetings, and I'm so impressed with the quality of the individuals that are come. Yes, they're a little bit older, but their stories are rich and, and wonderful. Rudy Tennis, who walked in and, and sat down, and he introduced himself as a name, and then and the Dr. Uh, Martinez says, now let me tell you the real story. He was a bullfighter in Mexico, and he's written several books. And uh, and he says he remembered my father, Humberto, and, uh, and me as a younger person. <laughs> so, I mean, the quality of individuals here is simply amazing. And that's one of the, I think, the gifts that your father had. The fact that he was able to recruit so many people who were from diverse backgrounds, uh, you know, incredible talent. And I think he was like the magnet. They used to draw them together and come up with all this uh, incredible collection of, of people. Because I mean, if you look at the articles that they have, you know, I mean, every range. I mean, some of them are in Spanish, some of them are in English. Uh, they deal with politics. They deal with the, you know, sports. They deal with, you know, social pages, even, even, even gossip. And so, and so, the gift of, of your father is the fact that he was able to get all these people together and put them in, uh, 
you know, the magazine. It's yeah. interesting, my father passed away in 1974, and I was able to publish the magazine for another eight years. But in doing all the research here, I'm more impressed with my <laughs> father's history than I was before as, as his son previously. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for being here today. Thank and, you. Uh, our, it's a wonderful event, and I, I hope to continue this for many more. Yep. So thank you so much. Buenas tardes, este, estamos aquí en el 50 aniversario del Excéntrico, um, un magazine que existió por muchos años, uh, mucha gente aquí en San José ha conocido el magazine El Excéntrico, obviamente estamos aquí por el interés de la historia, uh, de la historia en retratos, la historia en personajes que conocimos de hace muchos tiempos, quiero presentar al señor Herman Gallegos, un señor de casi 100 años, <risa> casi, no, casi, casi. No, no, no. Un, un señor que tuvo el honor de establecer la National Council of La Raza hace como 50 años. 50 años. Pero también estableció el CSO aquí en San José sí. como otros 55 años. En uh, 1952. En el 52. Fue, fue el primer presidente, César Chávez, el primer vicepresidente. Y el señor Juan Marcó de era el nuestro. Juan Marcodia fue el presidente del CIESO por cuatro años o cinco? ¿Cómo fue la pregunta? Nueve años, ¿no? ¿Nueve años fue presidente del CIESO? No. ¿O en la mesa directiva? No, fue dos veces elegido para el presidente. Bueno, fue elegido dos veces para presidente del capítulo del CIESO aquí en San José, que ha sido, siempre fue a uno de los CIESOs más activos en California, pero lo importante y lo significante de CSO es que aquí empezó César Chávez. Aquí fue donde empezó a aprender a organizar a la gente y para nosotros ha sido un honor conocer esa historia y estos dos señores fueron uh, muy uh, amigos de César Chávez y obviamente que lo apoyaban y no nomás eso, obviamente le daban, uh, les traían más gente para organizarlos y, y yo creo que ustedes trabajaron en los uh, uh, antes, uh, antes, uh, antes, registration antes, drives para votar. Sí, registrar gente para votar, pero antes este lugar se llamaba Sal Si Puedes, ahora es el Mayfair District. Ya, es cierto, <risa> ahora es cierto, ya cambió de nombre. Ya cambió, sí. Eh, eh, pero dígame algo que se acuerde de César Chávez en aquel tiempo. Pues Chávez, en el cual yo conocía a Chávez, era muy callado, no hablaba. Y poco a poco se fue desenvolviendo. Resulta de que Chávez... Después se interesó el movimiento que estaba haciendo en Los Ángeles, el capítulo de Los Ángeles, para el movimiento obrero de los trabajadores campesinos. Entonces Chávez se desesperó porque caminábamos muy despacio porque no había dinero. Ese fue un pequeño problema. Entonces él se arriesgó a dejar así eso a un lado y él a ver qué podía hacer solo. Pero, pero mire, no, créame que no se retiró de, de sí eso. No, fue no. a Oxnar sí. y fue a organizar ahí a los sí. trabajadores latinos de aquí de San de, de, de aquí de California, California y, y peleaba con los estos a, a los, agri, los agricultores, con los agricultores yeah. porque los agricultores querían trabajar nomás a los a los braceros, a los braceros. y ahí estaba el conflicto que él tenía que estar tratando de resolver sí. para llevar trabajo a, a nuestra gente así muy de bien, que no se retiró empezó a, agarrar, a, a trabajar más arduamente sí. antes la gente estaba hablando de sal si puedes, ahora yeah. sí se puede ahora sí se puede <risa> y sí se pudo y, y sí se, se pudo, pudo. Y sí se pudo. Bueno, muchísimas gracias, gracias. a Frank este, tomar esto y para nosotros, obviamente para los tres es un honor uh, estar contigo en, uh, en este programa. Uh, I just want to remind you that the purpose of this project is this is all going to be mobile. So we are going to be able to take these pictures as, and they're going to grow and grow to schools, churches, government offices because something is missing in this valley. The history of the Mexican Latino people. 32 years, and there's no better source of that history than the 600 volumes of El Excéntrico. So what we're gonna need your help in doing, and please don't leave before signing something, because we're, our basic goal is to work with the city and county library systems between the two systems they cover all the library systems. 
We want them to digitize the 600 magazines so that anybody can go to the library online and download any magazine. So we're going to need your name as a supporter because as we go to see the city council, board of supervisors, and at some point we'll call you to come down to see to help them see the wisdom of uh, doing this, okay? Now, before I go further, we have made four major discoveries during this uh, uh, project. And one of the biggest discoveries is, I don't know about you, but I never, ever heard of Las, Arma, of las Hermanas Montoya. Oh, yeah. Nunca he oído de Las Hermanas Montoya. Yeah, y, Where you been? Oh, yeah. Where you been? <laughs> No, you know what's the problem? I've been in school. And they don't teach it in school. You got a, we have a special for you today. We have Jasmine Garcia from San Jose State University. And she listened to the records of, uh, that, they, that they gave her and she said, I love this one song, so she's going to perform it for you. Here's Jasmine Garcia. Thank you so much for this opportunity for allowing me to sing. It's such an honor to play mess things up, I'm sorry. <laughs> mencionar también que la labor de los hermanos Zamora fue una sí, el señor John Zamora vende John porque son personas que formaron una, un círculo integral social que contribuyeron ampliamente al desarrollo de la cultura hispana en San José y en forma muy sólida y muy, muy fuerte Fernando Gracias, Rudy Tennis. I'm going to speak in English. Un segundo, señor. Primero quiero acabar con la señora porque tiene que salir. Oh, perdón. We just missed the mayor. I just want you to know that Mayor uh, Ricardo said hello to all. I just said I was going to break the rule here and speak in English because there are some people here who probably are more comfortable in English. And so for them, they've heard it in Spanish, now you're going to hear something really fast in English. We built this originally because we wanted to celebrate our culture, and we celebrate it here in the east side, not downtown, but here. 
We built this for our people where we could have events just like today and it's meeting all of our objectives, all of our goals, and we call it the Mexican Heritage Plaza. I happen to have been the chairman of that organization for 15 years when it was built, and I'm very proud of it. Thank you. Hey. This is John Zamora. I don't have to make it quick because I'm getting the cut over here. <laughs> but anyway, I, it's a pleasure to be here, and a pleasure to share our experiences that we've had in this fabulous city of San Jose. We arrived in 1946, and after living in uh, San Joaquin Valley, picking grapes and that kind of stuff, we found a gold mine. San Jose is a, a, a land of opportunity for the Latino. It was uh, a land of opportunity then, and it's a land of opportunity today. So I'm glad and I'm proud that my family was part of the growing of the Latino community here in the city of San Jose. Thank you all for coming. Gracias por su atención. Hi, my name is Gigi Bellamini. Well, how can I not be? We're, we were so honored when we found out that they were going to do this wonderful tribute to El Excentrico magazine. It was a part of my dad's life for so many years, since even before I was born. And he was always so proud to work for the magazine. He sold ads. He took photos. Just Mr. Socialite, just at every event. And again, he was just so proud. I mean, like I said, it's been a part of my life, all my life. So my dad was working with it and talking about it. And so when my father passed away in January this year, um, I put it on Facebook and I wanted all of his old friends to to know what happened. Of course, I was we were all devastated. And Ramon, Mr. Ramon Martinez, happened to comment, a really nice comment saying, man, Rudy was a, a, a huge part of the history of San Jose. He was a huge part of El Excentrico magazine. And then after that, he contacted me letting us know about this project. And if, if we had any information we could offer. So we were just very proud that they even included my dad. And just, just to be here was very overwhelming for all of us, for my mom and my sister as well. So we're very proud to be part of this. And we're very grateful that they that El Excentrico magazine was such a huge part of San Jose and we hope that we everyone can keep its memory alive forever. Hi, my name is Marcy Mora. I am uh, was a writer in a Excentrico uh, for many years and here right here is I'm in the Excentrico workshop where we used to where they used to print up all the Excentricos. 